Today, I'll be looking at not one, not two, but three flagship Yonex badminton shoes. So one's completely rock solid, the other one is super light, lean and fast, and the final one is kind of the best of both worlds. Which one will you pick? So as the video title says on the tin, I'm going to be reviewing and comparing three of Yonex's current flagship shoes here. Namely, the Eclipsion Z2 or Z2, depending on where you're from around the world, the 65 Z2, which is what Kento Momota has been wearing, and the Aerus Z, which is the current iteration of Yonex's current super light, super fast badminton shoes. So if you wanted to check out my previous video comparing the Aerus Z against its mid-range cousin, the Aerus X, go here. So when YC Sports, go check them out by the way, uh, reached out and asked if I wanted to review the Eclipsion Z2 and the 65Z2 shoes, I immediately said yes, as I've yet to try the Eclipsion series before. Additionally, this isn't the first generation of Eclipsion as well, so I had very good expectations for that one. For the 65 series, it's been about 10 years since I last tried a 65 model, which was the original SHB 65 F. Which was a Japan only model, whereas the rest of the world was getting it as SHB86. They were some of the best shoes I've ever worn back then, so I was super excited at the same time. So, before we start comparing, let me go through some of the specs and visual comparisons of the shoe here. So, I wear a Yonex 280mm in size, which is equivalent to UK size 9.5 or US size 10. So in the UK, Yonex sizes are generally half a size up compared to normal shoes. So if you're coming from other brands or standard shoe sizes, go up half a size. The best way to accurately get the correct size is to measure your feet in millimeters. So I have a Yonex shoe size chart on my website here, link in the description below. So if you get that right, then you don't have to worry about getting the shoe in the wrong size and having to return or exchange, saving you a lot of hassle and faff if you're buying online. So first off is the weight. So you can really feel the difference between the Aerus compared to the other two in this situation. So the Aerus weighs 288 grams per side compared to 366 for the Eclipsion, whereas the 65Z2 came in at 345 per side. Now the 78 grams difference per side might not look like much, however if you're like me and you're very used to the Aerus shoes, you will then immediately feel that the Eclipsion is heavier. But the weight difference between the 65 and the Eclipsion is almost negligible at this point, at only 21 grams apart. So as an added comparison, the Aerus X, which is the mid-range model of the Aerus version, is actually lighter than both the 65 and the Eclipsion coming in at only 336 grams. So there's some more comparison for you. So all three pairs of shoes share a lot of similarities in terms of design. For example, the toe assist shape alongside synchro fit insole designs include the use of Power Cushion and Power Cushion Plus are on every single shoe. However, I do want to highlight that I found the Aerus Z to have a different type of insole compared to the 65Z2 as well as the Eclipsion. The Aerus Z has this more textured and grippy insole which is actually thinner and lighter compared to the other two models. The 65 and Eclipsion has this smooth on the bottom but wavy at the top insole in both of them. It is also thicker and certainly will be able to take more pounding as well. But I find myself preferring the Aerus Z's insole as they are grippier and I don't slide in the shoe as much, especially when new. So this is certainly a personal preference but I'm showing you guys all this so you can make your own decisions when buying. So moving on to the other obvious differences, for starters, on the upper side of the shoe you can tell that the Eclipsion has a dimple like design whereas the Aerus has a very clean cut laser focused design. The 65 kind of takes the middle ground with some rubbery and leather like material coupled with the mesh on the upper side for ventilation. The durable skin design on the Eclipsion combines three types of meshes, the coarse mesh on the very front of the shoe followed by a convex pattern which looks very similar to a golf ball dimple design and ending with a layer of fine mesh throughout the shoe as well. Another immediate area of difference is the outer rubber soles of the shoe. The Eclipsion model has a single connected piece of rubber outsole, whereas the Aerus N65 models have two pieces of rubber outsoles, one on the top and another on the bottom of the shoe. Additionally, the grip design on the rubber outsoles are different for the Eclipsion compared to the 65 and Aerus at the same time. 
The Eclipse model has this radial blade sole design which Yonex says will improve the grip by 3% and I thought it looked like a slightly imbalanced windmill design whereas the Aerus N65 models has its usual hexagon shaped design for its rubber soles. Uh, speaking about soles, remember the difference in insole design I talked to you about earlier. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there are ventilation holes cut around the arch area and the top of the wavy pattern insoles. This is because both the Eclipsion and the 65Z2s have ventilation vents underneath the shoes, which is covered by a mesh filter protecting dirt or pebbles from popping in. So if you're someone who's worried about getting very hot feet from playing badminton, you wouldn't have to worry about the Eclipsion and the 65Z2s. But on the other side, I wouldn't walk through slightly deeper puddles if you wear them outside of a badminton hall as water would get straight into your shoes otherwise. If you're wondering about the Aerus Z, it is completely sealed on the bottom, but I've never had any issues with hot feet, so there's that. And the last difference between the shoes are the Eclipsion model having a booty design, where the shoe is designed to fit like a boot and has a sock-like feel when worn. This design feature might feel different for players who have not worn it before. The Aerus and the 65 on the other hand has a normal shoe design with a tongue at the top of the shoe as usual. So the next comparison is how do the three pairs of shoes stack up and perform against each other on court. But before I do, what are your thoughts on these designs of the shoe? Do you have any one of them? Let me know it down in the comments section below. So I've spent the last few months going through all three of them in different situations such as hard training sessions with a lot of movement and changes of direction, normal easier sessions as well as games and matches. So simply put, if you want out and out performance and you're the type of player that isn't very heavy on your shoes you'll absolutely love the Aerus Z, and this will be your dream shoe. This thing is like a Formula 1 car really, super lean, ultra lightweight and crazy responsive. If you've never worn a pair of these before, the first time you pick it up you'll be surprised at how light it is. It is certainly also adequately supported with both Power Cushion and Power Cushion Plus. I don't have very wide feet so the fit is great for me, I love this shoe, it's absolutely amazing. I would certainly advise a bit of caution against the Aerus Z if you're someone who goes through your badminton shoes very quickly. If you typically wear through your badminton shoes in less than 6 months, this might not be for you as this is built for out and out performance and is very lean in terms of additional durability supports. So just a bit of caution there. We then go into the other side of the spectrum and take a look at the Eclipsion Z2. This thing is built like a tank. It had rock solid stability and I don't think I've come across any other shoe as good in terms of stability. Perhaps the Lindan Hero models from Li Ning which I had many many moons ago came close in terms of stability but that shoe is very very heavy. When you first put on the Eclipsion Z2, you certainly notice the shoe pull tab on the back as it'll be rubbing against your heel or Achilles area slightly. I had normal length socks on so it didn't bother me any further, but you might have a problem if you have cropped socks on. Another thing I found was in my first 10 minutes of wearing the shoe, my foot arch was sore as I didn't feel I have enough support around the arch area, but this is actually quite common when testing out new pairs of shoe. After the first 10 minutes, things calmed down and I've never had that sore feeling again, so that's okay. And I know I've talked about the weight earlier being the heaviest amongst the three pairs of shoes, but I've never felt that this shoe slowed me down at all, or maybe I wasn't very quick to begin with. Um, but this thing felt very planted and stable when I was going for my movement into shots, so overall I think this shoe will have very very good durability and be solid for plenty of players. You might feel the shoes are quite big in terms of size and heft, uh, perhaps even a touch clumsier compared to say like the Aerus Z, but it'll certainly give you the feeling and reassurance of your feet being better protected all the time, so this is a good shoe to invest in. Lastly, we take a look at this amazing looking 65Z2. I've gotten plenty of compliments off this shoe and a lot of ladies asking where can they buy them, so Yonex please take note and make a ladies version. This shoe for me is the hardest one to describe, it's just so good. I would call it an all-rounder shoe, but it's not like it's all-rounder where it scores 7s or 8s out of 10 in every single department. This thing scores 9.5s in every single category out of 10. 
Hence, it is one of the best badminton shoes money can buy in terms of how good it is performance wise. As soon as you put on the 65Z2, the familiar feeling of my 65FT from so many years ago came back. I remember that shoe being really soft and cushy, but this one's slightly firmer than back in the day and I like this better. In terms of fit, the 65's toe box takes a middle ground compared to the Aeris and the Eclipsion. The Aeris had a really soft upper, whereas the Eclipsion has a stiff one. In terms of comfort, this thing is right up there with the very best. You can certainly see why it's so popular with the pros like Victor Althusson and Kenta Momota all liking the 65s. At the time of riding, which is post Thomas and Sudeman Cup, Kenta Momota is wearing the third generation of the 65 called the 65Z3. So watch out for that review after it's finally released after countless delays due to COVID. So in the meantime, besides from the very snug and comfy fit, you'll also find the 65 slightly taller in terms of support. I'm not sure if this means we get more power cushion plus or the design just has thicker bouncy material, but it certainly doesn't make you feel that you're too tall and you trip and it's very smooth and stable when moving around court. I mentioned earlier, weight-wise, this thing is in, in between the Aerus and the Eclipsion. So whilst it's not the lightest, it's by no means heavy and it's pretty fast whilst being super comfy. So thus far, there's no issue with durability, so this one is an absolute winner from me. Long story short, if you want Formula One performance, get the Aerus Z. If you want stability and protection of a tank, get the Eclipsion Z2. If you want a cross between a Formula One car and a tank, get the 65 Z2. So the real question is, which one will you pick? I'll see you in the next one.